In this lecture we're going to look at some specific applications of the exponential function and uh, the application is called exponential growth or and decay. All right, so we have uh, real life scenarios uh, which can be modeled by an exponential function in a way in which uh, we see that the growth all right, is actually proportional to the, the rate of to the um, to the actual population that we're considering. So this has to do with lots of different uh, kinds of situations in ecology um, for populations and biology, economics, the growth of um, uh, finances and also of uh, national um, e economies and things like this. Also in the social sciences there's a lot of applications uh, for the growth and decay of um, situations which will be based on exponential growth and decay. So basically we have a zero amount to start with, or I mean I should an initial amount, this is what's called an initial amount, right, which is present at time t equals zero. Now under certain conditions, uh, like I said, that the rate of growth is proportional to the, uh, the amount that's there initially, right, then uh, the amount present at any times t is, can be modeled by this particular function. Y is equal to Y zero, that's the initial amount, all right, uh, by e to the kt, k is called the growth or decay constant. All right, and of course in t uh, units of time. Now each uh, particular situation will have a different growth or decay constant, so sometimes that's the thing we have to find first. Now when k is positive, the function describes growth because it's increasing. And in section uh, 4.2, we saw examples of exponential growth. We looked at compound interest, uh, atmospheric carbon dioxide, for example. And when k was less than zero, then this function dec describes what we can call decay. In other words, the amount's decreasing. And an example, a very common example, an important example of exponential decay is radioactivity. When a material which is radioactive, all right, loses energy, it decays or loses that amount of that substance because it's changing to a different substance. So we're going to look at some of these kinds of models. So the first example we're going to look at is the growth of atmospheric carbon dioxide over time. A function based on this data from the table was uh, given in that example back in section 4.2. Right, and we see uh, how to determine uh, such a function from this data. So here's our data that we've collected. 1990, this will be when x is equal to zero. All right, year 2000, we had this measurement. Uh, 2075, all right, we're suggesting this. And what, 2001, uh, 2175 and 2275, this. So what we want to do is we want to find an exponential function that will give the amount of carbon dioxide y in your in year x all right so in other words if we come back to our growth and decay we have a situation like this so what we have to identify is this all right so we need this we need this so we need the growth constant all right so that's the first thing we have to be able to do to find that. Then, once we have that, we're going to estimate the year when the future levels of carbon dioxide will be double the pre-industrial level of 28, uh, 280 parts per million. All right, so this is the pre-industrial level. All right, so the first thing we have to work on is how do we determine, right, um, the actual function. Okay, so we've got a couple of things that we need to do here. So first of all, we notice that x equals zero implied that was 1990, okay? So x equals one implies we're talking about 1991, all right, and so forth, all right? And so um, the initial amount, y zero, all right, if you look at it, right, is when t equals zero, so in 1990, all right, we have uh, t equals zero, and so if I look at y equals y zero e to the k t, but that's zero now, okay? And uh, of course we know that t is equal to, all right, if we look at our table, right, 353. All right, 
then y equals 353. So this implies then that 353 is equal to y0 e to the 0, but as e to the 0, of course, is 1. So we've got y0 is equal to 353. Okay. So our first part of our model is that y equals 353 e to the kt. So now we need k. All right, now there's a couple of things we can do here. So for example, um, if we look at our table, all right, we've got in 2000, uh, uh, 2275, all right, uh, so let's look at two, 2275 minus 1990 comes out to be what? Uh, 285 years. All right, so we know the level is 2000, in 2275. All right, so what we have here is then when t is equal to 285, right, y is equal to 2000. So using our model we have here, we have 2000 equals 353e to the k by 285. So in other words, 2000 divided by 353 is equal to e to the 285k. All right. All right. So <clears throat> there, of course, we would need to uh, think about, OK, how do we undo this uh, this E function while well, using LN? So I'll put that on the, this side. Like so. And this un e LN undoes the E. So I've got 285K equals the LN of 2000 over 353. So k is equal to the ln of 2000 over 353 divided by 285. And now we'll need a calculator. All right, so we have 2000 uh, divided by 353 equals this. Take the ln of it, which is that. All right. Uh, make sure we did that right. OK, 2000. Uh, divide by 353 equals this. Take the ln of it, and we get this, and now we divide it by 285, which is this, and we get uh, approximately um, 0, oops, 0 0.00608. So, um, and if we round it off to uh, three significant figures, this will be... Um, 0 0.00609. Alright, so our model then is going to be y is equal to 353e to the 0 0.00609t. So there's our model. Okay. Alright, part b, alright, you'll notice that in part b what we have to do is find when it will double the pre-level. So double will be 2 times 280, which is 560. So I need to know when y is equal to 560. All right, so here we go. So we have 560 equals 353e to the point 00609t. This implies, of course, that 560 divided by 353 equals e to the point 00609t. Right, so we need a calculator now. And uh, we'll actually we'll rearrange it first. So let's look at ln of e to the point 00609t equals the ln of 560 over 353. So this one does this, so I get 0 0.00609t equals the ln of 560 over 353. Right, which implies that t is equal to the ln of 560 over 353 over 0.00609. Right, so here we go. All right, so we have 560 divided by 353 uh, equals this. Take the ln of it, is this, and now we divide it by 0.00. 
6.09, which is equal to 75, so 75.77. So we'll round it to one decimal place, so T is approximately 77 point uh, A. Is that what I did? No, 75, I should say. 75 point, and we rounded off to one decimal place, eight years. So the year would be, all right, um, 1990 plus 75.8 years. Okay. And that, of course, comes out to be um, 2065.8. So during the year 2065 is when we'll have the double the pre-industrial levels. All right, so that's that. Another one that we looked at was the um, compounding continuously. All right, and so, for example, how long does it take, all right, for a um, for money in an account that accrues interest at a rate of 4.25% compounded continuously to double. Now remember that our amount for continuous um, uh, compounding interest is given by this. So P was the principal. Okay. All right. So um, now. And then we have uh, R is the rate, and T is the time in years. All right, so this is our rate. So in other words, R is equal to 0 0.0425. All right, we want this to double. So in other words, we want A to be equal to twice P. All right, because that doubles the principal, all right? So what we have is 2p equals p e to the point 0 0.0425t, and we need t. All right, we can divide through by p, so we get 2 equals e to the point 0 0.0425t. We need to undo the e, so let's take the ln of it. ln of 2 on this side. So this undoes the E, so we get 0 0.0425T equals the ln of 2. So T then is equal to the ln of 2 divided by 0 0.0425. And that comes out to be, get our calculator, we have 2, which is the ln, and now divide by 0 0.0425, and we end up with 16.3 years. would be the number of years that it takes to um, double all right, at that interest rate. All right, so that's uh, a second example. Now, the third one, uh, population growth is a very typical one that is exponentially growing. So according to the US Census Bureau, the world population reached 6 billion people during 1999 and was growing exponentially. By the end of 2010, the population had grown to 6.94, uh, 6 uh, 6.947 billion, okay? And the projected world population in billions of PRT years after 2010 notice is given by this model here. So based on this model, what will be the world population in uh, 2015? Well, look at part A. If we take t equals zero, right, to represent the year 2010, okay? Right, so then uh, the year 2015 will be when t is equal to 5, okay? So what we have here is then f of uh, 5 is going to be equal to 6.947 e to the point zero zero seven four five 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 so we can get a calculator to do this so it's six point nine four seven e so let's get our calculator out of here so we get point zero seven four five actually we've got two zeros in there so it's point uh, zero zero 
745 times 5, which is, all right, uh, point, zero three seven two five right now we need to raise that to the power of e so we end up with this so actually we need to do that so um, e so we take this to the zero point zero three seven two five equals this now times it by uh, six point nine four seven and we end up with seven point uh seven point two uh rounded off here i guess to um so it's going to be approximately seven point two one one billion all right in 2015 okay Right, next, what year will the population reach 8 billion? All right, well, what we need to do here, of course, is part B. What we have is um, F of T is going to be equal to 8 billion. So we need to find T. All right, so here is our model again. So we have F of T is going to be equal to 6.947e to the point zero zero. 745t. So in this case, what we have is 8 is equal to 6.947e to the 0.00745t. All right, so um, e then to the 0.00745t is going to be equal to 8 divided by 6.947. All right, now we take the ln of both sides. So, so we end up with 0.00745t equals the ln of 8 over 6.947. So consequently what we have then is t is equal to the ln of 8 over 6.947 divided by 0.00745. Now we can get a calculator onto this. All right, so we have 8 divided by 6.947 is equal to this. Take the ln of it is equal to this. Make sure we did that right. 8 divided by 6.947. Ah. Equals this. All right. Um, take the ln of it. And now divide it by 0 0.00745. And we end up with 18.9. Um, so approximately 18.9 years. So if we know, want to know what year that will be, then of course um, it'll be 2010 plus 18.9, which is going to be 20. 18, all right, point 0.9, so it's going to occur during 2018. Uh, oh, 18, so it'll be 28, sorry. Oops, yeah, 10. <laughs> Watch the arithmetic, all right, so there it is. During 2028. I was thinking it was a little bit close, all right, so there we have it. All right, so that's how we do that. Now, the next one we're going to talk about is decay functions. But the important thing to hear to remember is that the function is decreasing. Now, we talk about what's called the half-life, which is the amount of time it takes for a quantity that decays exponentially to become half its initial amount. So if I have an amount of y0 to start with, then the half-life, the time it requires to get it to a half y0. Okay? So in this particular case here, let's suppose that 800 grams of a radioactive substance are present initially and 2.5 years later, only 400 grams. Determine the exponential um, 
equation that models this particular decay. All right, so remember that our model is given by e to the kt, but in this case, k is negative. Okay. All right, now we need to find k. All right, and uh, y is zero. And so what we have here is y zero is 800. And we have y is equal to 400. Interesting, that's half. So the time that taken here, 2.5 years, that's clearly the half-life. All right, because it's taken 2.5 years to go from 800 to 400, which is half. All right, so what I have here is um, 400 is equal to 800 e to the k by 2.5. So dividing here, 400... I divide by 800, which of course is a half, is equal to e to the 2.5k. So this implies that if I take the ln of both sides, I end up with this. Okay, The ln undoes the e, so I've got 2.5k is equal to the ln of a half. So k is equal to the ln of a half divided by 2.5. So now we can get this approximately get our calculator, so we get 0.5 is a half, take the ln of it, and now divide by 2.5 gives me negative, notice it's a negative, it should be negative, uh, 0.277. Okay, so we'll round it to three decimal places, so let's do that. So this means it's going to be negative 0.277. Right, so our model is going to be given by y equals Right, um, 800 e to the negative 0.277 t. Okay, now part B, how much of the substance will be present after six years? So when t is equal to six, okay, all right, so when t is equal to uh, six, we're going to have. Um, Uh, let's have a look and see what we're going to do with this. We're going to have, um, we need y is what we need. So it's going to be 800 e to the negative 0.277 by 6. So we substitute for t. So this is going to be 800 e to the, now we get a calculator. Right, we're multiplying this by 6. And so we end up with negative 1.664. Okay, all right, so this is what y is. So now, of course, we're going to need to, uh, to do that. So let's, uh, we get our e, and we're gonna raise it to uh, 1.664, but negative. So we end up with this, and now times it by 800 equals this. So we're now going to have 150 one, and let's round it off to 152 grams. So there is approximately 152 grams left after six years. Right. Now, an important application of this is what's called carbon dating. All right. Now, carbon-14 is known as a radioactive um, substance. It's called radiocarbon. All right. And it's found in all living plants and animals. Now, when they die, of course, the radi radiocarbon disintegrates or break or decays down to carbon-12. So scientists can determine the age of uh, the remains by comparing the amount of uh, radiocarbon with the amount present in living plants and animals. And this technique is called radio, uh, sorry, carbon dating. Now, the amount of ra radio car radiocarbon present t years is all is given by this model. Okay, where y is the amount present in the living animals and plants. So, if we want to determine the half life, how long does it take for it to decay halfway? 
All right, so if I had 10 grams, it's down to five grams. Of course, we're talking about much more smaller values than this. All right, so what we want is the half-life occurs when y is equal to a half y zero. So in this case here, we have a half y zero is equal to y zero e to the negative point zero 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 one two one six t. Notice that this cancels. So if I take the ln of both sides, then I get the ln of a half here. So this ln undoes the e, so I end up with this equals the ln of a half. Notice it's the same process that we looked at already. So t is going to be equal to the ln of a half over negative point zero 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 one two one six. All right, so this is going to be approximately, if we get our calculator out, so it's going to be 0.5, we find the ln again, and divide by 0.000121.6, but negative. All right, and we end up with 5,700. So let's round it off to the number of years. So it's approximately 5,700 years it takes for it to decay half. Okay. All right, next. All right, let's suppose then archaeologists discovered that the linen wrapping from one of the Dead Sea Scrolls had lost 22.3% of its carbon-14. So lost 22%, so what's 100 minus 22.3%? Well, that would be 77.7%. So in other words, our amount, all right, is going to be equal to 0.777 of our original amount. Okay, because there's 77.7% .7 left. All right, now we want to know how old this is. So we know our actual um, model is actually given by uh, y0 e to the negative 0.0001216t. In this case, of course, we have y equals this. So we have 0.777y0 equals y0 e to the negative 0.0001216t. All right, the y zeros will cancel out, dividing both sides. So we end up with taking the lot ln of both sides, and I'll put this one first. Same process. So we end up with this. So the ln does un undoes the e, so I end up with like so. So t then is equal to the ln of 0.777 over negative 0.0001216. So we'll need our calculator. All right, so we end up with 0.777, we take the ln of it. And now divide it by 0.0001216, but negative, is equal to this. So we end up with 2,074.9. So let's round it up to 2,075. All right, so, right, the, what we can say then is the uh, linen... Okay, so the linen uh, wrapping is approximately 2,075 years old. Okay, all right, so that's how we do that. All right, the last uh, example I want to look at is uh, coming back and talking about Newton's law of cooling. Now, Newton's law of cooling says that the rate at which your body uh, cools is proportional to the difference in the temperature between the body and the environment around it. All right, so the temperature, Ft, of a body at time t in appropriate units after being introduced into the environment having a constant temperature of t0 is given by this model. C is a constant and K is a constant. All right, so now let's suppose that a... Uh, pot of coffee with a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius is set down in a room with a temperature of 20 degrees. So the coffee cools to 60 degrees after one hour. Okay. 
Alright, so in other words, it's dropped by 40 degrees after one hour. We want to write an equation for this data. Alright, so let's have a look at that. So let's look at part A. We want to find a model for this. So remember that f of t is equal to t0 plus c uh, e to the negative kt. So this implies then that f of t is going to be equal to, let's identify things here. Alright, this was its initial temperature. Okay. Alright, so uh, t0 is the constant temperature that it gets introduced to, so this is 20 to 20 here. So that's 20. Okay. Alright, um, plus C we don't know, E to the negative KT. Alright, so I've got that one part there. Now what we do know, however, is that the coffee pot had a 100 degree temperature, right, initially, when T is equal to zero. Alright, equals 100. So this is going to be 20 plus C e to the negative k by 0. So this implies then that 100 equals 20 plus c. This is e to the 0, which is 1. So if I now solve for c, c then is going to be 100 minus 20, which is 80. Okay, so we now have that. So f of t then is going to be equal to 20 plus 80 e to the negative k t. Now we need to find k. All right, now, after one hour, when t is equal to one, all right, what do we have? Well, we have that f of one is equal to 60. So what I have is 60 equals 20 plus 80 e to the negative k by one, which means I subtract here, I get 40 equals 80, e to the negative k, which implies that 40 over 80 is equal to e to the negative k. All right, so 40 divided by 80 is a half, is equal to e to the negative k. All right, so um, if I now uh, find the ln of both sides, the ln of e to the negative k is equal to ln of a half. So therefore, negative k equals the ln of a half, and so k is equal to negative ln of a half, which comes out to be, let's get our calculator out, so we get 0.5, and we take the ln of it, and we take a the negative of that, so it's going to be about uh, 0.6931. So let's round it off to two decimal places, uh, three decimal places, so we end up with this. All right, so our model is going to be f of t is equal to 20 plus 80 e to the negative 0.693 t. All right, now, <coughs> part b. All right, now, if you look at part b, you find the temperature in half an hour. So when t, t is equal to a half, we want f of a half which is going to be 20 plus 80 e to the negative 0 0.693 by 0 0.5, which is a half. All right, so we need our calculator. So we need to times this by 0 0.5, which is this. So I get uh, 20 plus 80 e to the negative 0.34 7. All right, now what we need to do then is uh, use our calculator. So we get raise that to the power of 0.347. Oops, missed the point. So it's going to be E raised to the power of 0.347, but negative, equals this. Times it by 80 is this. And now add 20 is this, and I get 76.6 if we were close enough, oh, 76.5. So let's go 70, so it's approximately 76.5, all right, degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's what its temperature will be. 
Now, the next thing that would be interesting to know, all right, to know, right, is let's make it part C, all right. How long does it take it take to cool to, say, um, 50 degrees? Right, so in this particular case here, what we have is f of t, remember, is equal to 20 plus 80e to the negative 0.693t. We want to find t now for when it's 50 degrees. So 50 equals 20 plus 80e to the negative 0.693t. So subtract 20 first, so I get 30 equals 80e to the negative 0.693t. And now divide. So, so this implies then that e to the negative 0.693t is equal to 3 over 8. Right, now if I take the ln of both sides, 3 eighths, like so. So the ln does, undoes the e, should be a t there, all right, equals the ln of 3 eighths. So t then is equal to the ln of 3 eighths, divided by negative 0.693. So this comes out to be, if we look at our calculator, 3 divided by 8 equals this. Take the ln of it, is this, and now divide it by 0.693, but negative, and that produces uh, 1.4, so there's approximately 1.415, so this is approximately one. 1.415 hours, okay, all right, or about one hour, and if we look at um, 0.415 times 60 is 24.9, so one hour, 25 minutes, and that's how we do that.